Volume Data 2.1. This is Networking 103, the reverse proxy one. That's right, the golden goose of home networking, right, to set up your own custom domain name. So in order to set up our custom domain name, I'm going to talk about using a reverse proxy. If you don't know what that is, this is going to be very useful to you. If you haven't already watched Networking 101 and 102, I would definitely do that first. Otherwise, some of this stuff is going to get a little confusing, but let's get into it. So let's just say you bought theylive.com. Got some sunglasses, you're seeing some weird stuff, you wanna document it and show it to the world. So you buy theylive.com, and what you want to happen is if someone goes to photos.theylive.com, they go to your instance of Synology Photos. And when you're sharing Synology Photo stuff, you can share it through photos.theylive.com. So in order to do that, here's what would happen. You'll buy your domain name somewhere. You're gonna set it up so you create a photos.theylive.com subdomain. You are gonna direct that to theylive.com. Domain, And then your domain, you are going to forward that over to this guy here. And that is the public or external IP address of your home's router. And then your home's router is going to port forward and it's going to say, hey, anyone trying to get in for web traffic, send that to the Synology NAS. But it's more specific than that. In your router, you're actually gonna say, not just send it to my Synology NAS, but go ahead and send it to port 80 or 443, depending on if they're using HTTP or HTTPS. And then your router, or sorry, your reverse proxy, your Synology NAS's reverse proxy is going to say, hey, where is this traffic coming from? Photos.daylive.com? All right, go ahead and send them to port 1000. Actually, I'm sorry, go ahead and send them to my own IP address, the IP address of the Synology NAS, where it's located, and then port 1000, which is where Synology Photos is located. And that is how a reverse proxy works. And this will work for any subdomain. So if you had nextcloud.daylive.com, you would do the same thing. It's gonna flow through the same system. And the difference is when the reverse proxy gets the hit of nextcloud.daylive.com, it'll just send them to a different port number. Like maybe that's on port 2000 and you can have it send them there. But that is the gist of how a reverse proxy works. So let's dig into it a little bit more. And let's start with the home networking section. So let's forget about this stuff for now. So you have a public IP address. If you just Google, what is my IP address, that's going to bring that up. So for example, I have 101.202.303. I don't think that's a real one. But this IP address is unique to your router. Nobody else has this IP address, I don't think, which is a lot different from this guy, which I talked about in the other videos, which is a private or internal IP address. This would be an internal. And this is the IP address that's going to be used on all your local machines. So for example, your Synology NAS, or if you have a Raspberry Pi, or a TV, your phone, your laptop, or whatever. These IP addresses can appear on other people's networks, but this one cannot. This one is unique to you. So what would happen if you typed this into a web browser? As we learned in 101 and 102, if you typed in HTTPS, that's actually gonna take you to not only this address, but port 443. And then what's gonna happen is nothing. And that is because your router by default is protecting you. It's got a firewall and says, anybody trying to access any port on this home network is going to be denied access. And that is for your protection. And that's a very good thing. It's what keeps you secure. So if you open up a port though, you can actually tell it to go somewhere. So in this case, let's say we have port 443. What you can do is go into your router settings and you're looking for something called port forwarding. And port forwarding is where we can tell our router, hey, if somebody's trying to access port 443, send them to the Synology NAS. Probably not gonna ask for an IP address, it'll probably list the machines on your network, but it's also gonna ask, okay, go to the Synology NAS, or what machine do you want me to go to, but also what port number do you want them to end up at? So in this case, I can say, if anyone's trying to access port 443 on my router, send them to my Synology NAS, and then also send them to port 443 on my Synology NAS. And port 443 on the Synology NAS, as well as port 80, are the ports for the reverse proxy. And that's just a program that redirects traffic. So if I come in here, if you go into your NAS and go to Control Panel, Login Portal, and then click on Advanced Reverse Proxy, Create, you can see how the reverse proxy works. And this isn't a tutorial, but this is where this lives. So if you were trying to send them, for example, to They Live Photos, you could just say, what is the origin that they're coming from? In this case, it'd be HTTPS Photos. If I can spell photos.theylive.com port 443, and then the destination that I want them to go to, right? I would just use the IP address of my Synology NAS, 192.168.1.10. Is that what I use in the example, I think? Yeah, 10 is what I use in the example. And then the port for my Synology photos, let's just say that it's 1000. It's, it's probably not, but let's just say it is, for example. So that is kind of how you would direct that traffic here. That's how a reverse proxy works in directing all your traffic. 
The nice thing about the reverse proxy is otherwise, you would have to open up all of these ports on your home network. So, you know, if, imagine if you have Nextcloud and Image and Uptime Kuma, and you wanted to open those all up on your network, you'd have to port forward all of those IP addresses, or sorry, you'd have to port forward all of those port numbers. And that actually brings up a pretty big security concern. So I would look that up too on why a reverse proxy is safer than opening up a bunch of ports on your home network. So that's why we're doing that. But theoretically, you could say, hey, um, if somebody wants to access Synology Photos, just let them type in my IP address and then have port 443, just port forward that to port 1000. That would also work, but you probably don't wanna do that. So let me get rid of port forwarding here. Let's go and check out the DNS side of things. So what we're doing here with the DNS settings with theylive.com, for example, is we're basically substituting this here. So you don't have to remember this number. So we're just saying, hey, theylive.com becomes that IP address. In your registrar, when you buy a domain name, there are a few things that you would have to do to set this up. And again, this isn't a tutorial, but this is what they're going to basically tell you. You would get a domain name, and a domain name is points at an, it's called an A record, and the A record has to point at an IP address. So that IP address would just be your, no, sorry, not the port number. That IP address that the A record needs to point to is going to be your home router's IP address. Subdomains need what are called C names, and C name records point to domain names. So in this case, we're just gonna point it to our own domain name that we have. And all of this information basically travels with people when they type it in. So if someone types in photos.theylive.com, that information is going to be tracked through all of this all of this journey. So that's why that. I know it seems a little bit confusing to forward everything to theylive.com because you kind of think, doesn't that, wouldn't every page be the same if it's just going to theylive.com? But the subdomains get attached to this journey. So that's why it's able to differentiate stuff. But that is the gist of how this would work out for you. So you would just point this guy to your domain, you point your subdomain to your domain, your domain to your router, your router is port 80 and 443. You might get be able to get away with just port 443. You just point that to your Synology NAS, but not just the Synology NAS. You're gonna point it to the reverse proxy and you let the reverse proxy do the rest. So that is how that would work. And that would give you the option to use multiple subdomains. That's not the end of that journey though. Having a reverse proxy gets a little bit complicated. So let's say for example, you go to your Synology NAS. You can see here that I get this little warning, right? No seguro, it's not safe. The reason it is because I don't have a certificate on here. I know that this is safe because it's on my home network and I upkeep the Synology NAS so I know that it's safe, but somebody else coming onto your NAS might not know that it is safe. So you have to manage security certificates. And that's something that you can look up on Synology's website, how to do that. They use um, Let's Encrypt to do that. This, this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. So you might have a little bit of fun with that. It might not be the most fun thing to do, but you would have to take care of your own security certificate. You also have to worry about your IP address. So your router has this home IP address that is given to you by your internet provider. They actually change this domain name for your own security, I think. Actually, I have no idea why they change it, but they change it. I think it's for security purposes. Every, it could be every couple months, could be every couple of years. I actually haven't had mine ever change on me, and it's been a couple of years. Typically, it changes on you, though. So you would use a thing called DDNS, Dynamic Domain Name System, I think is what that stands for. But what DDNS does is it basically detects the changes of your IP address and can send that to your registrar. That is kind of complicated to set up. So if you're using a custom domain name, just know that you might have to actually pay attention to when your home's router IP address changes because one day all of your subdomains and your domain name are just gonna stop working. So that will not be great for you. You'll have to know about that. So, but just so you know, just to point you in the right direction, DDNS, DDNS is what you are looking for if you wanna to try to automatically solve that problem. It might not be that big of an issue for you though. So something, something to think about. The other thing, speaking of certificates, is I do not love the Synology NAS reverse proxy. It's a little bit complicated to set up and manage certificates. So there are other programs out there that you can use. You can use, for example, Nginx Proxy Manager. This is the reverse proxy that a lot of people start off with and it's the easiest to set up. It does have a beautiful UI, I'll give them that. And you can run it with Docker, so you can throw it up on your Synology NAS pretty easily. This is not a tutorial on that, but that is a way that people go with. More advanced people probably use traffic tra or traffic. I think it's pronounced traffic. This is a very popular one to use. And then sometimes people like me who just stick everything in command line will use swag. So I use one. This is by linuxserver.io. That is a reverse proxy that I use. 
You'll see here I have an asterisk for minecraft.dailive.com. This is something to remember when you're using other programs. Minecraft is not a web browser. So if you're in Minecraft and you enter a domain name, for example, minecraft.dailive.com, Minecraft is actually looking, it's not looking for port 443. It's actually just looking for port 25565. If you're on the Java version, if you're on the Bedrock version, I'm not sure which port number that it's looking for, but if you're on Bedrock, it's automatically going to port 25565 and not 443 or anything like that. So on your router, you would have to say, if somebody's coming in and looking for port 25565, go ahead and point them to wherever you're hosting. Let's just say it's on the Synology NAS. And then you would just point it to port 25565 on your NAS. So it's going to bypass your reverse proxy because it is not looking for port 443. Minecraft is looking for this port by default, at least the Java version is. And what that means is that you actually don't even need to type in the subdomain. You could just type in theylive.com because that domain is pointing here. And since it's the only thing looking for port 25565, that'll just work without the subdomain. Another thing that you might encounter is when you are looking up how to set up subdomains is some people don't use subdomains. They might actually just use what is called a wildcard. So instead of typing in all of these subdomains, what they might do is use an asterisk. Asterisk. And what the asterisk means, it's uh, short for a wildcard. And that basically just means any subdomain dot my domain. Go ahead and point them to that record there. So that way you don't have to keep typing out subdomains. But you can run into some stability issues with that. Some people have issues with it. Some people don't. I haven't had any issues with it. But depending on who you are using and how your stuff is set up, I'm not exactly sure about the specifics, the specifics but you may encounter issues with that. So that is the gist of how a reverse proxy works and how you can set up your domain to get all the way to your Synology NAS and do some things. There's a lot of good tutorials out there for this stuff, but hopefully this clears a little bit of the fog about what's going on behind the scenes and how this works. Again, ultimately, you might have a better time using something like a VPN. If you're really determined to get this to work, there are definitely some advantages because a reverse proxy is going to be faster than something like Quick Connect and it's probably gonna be faster than using a VPN. So depending on the type of work you're doing, like if you're working with spreadsheets or documents, that's probably not that big of a deal, but you might have other instances, especially with Synology Photos, where maybe you do want a faster connection. The other benefit too is if you send somebody a link with a reverse proxy, they can just open it up and it'll work. Whereas if you're using a VPN like Tailscale, whoever you're sending it to also has to have Tailscale and you're gonna have to walk them through that setup process too. So it becomes a little bit less of an appealing Google Photos alternative, but with a reverse proxy, it works out well. I would also check out Synology's official DDNS. If you just Google DDNS Synology, it should come up on how to set up DDNS using, um, pop, 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 using their own services. So yeah, so they have an example here. You can actually make something like www.john.synology.me. They have a couple of predetermined domain names, but you can make a custom like pre-domain to that. So that's how you would get that to work. And if you do it with Synology, you don't have to worry about your IP address changing because it takes care of the DDNS for you. And I believe you just get a free domain. So there are other things you can look up to like duck DDNS and things like that. They integrate a little bit with some other service providers. So that's also worth checking out. I've never gotten this part to work here where you're setting up a customized DDNS provider, but I'm sure that it could work. But yeah, that is how you set up a reverse proxy. I think one of the best ways of using a reverse proxy actually is by buying a, a VPS, which is basically like a computer in the cloud. You can set up like a little Linux instance and install Docker on there and use a reverse proxy and point it all there. And then it's not pointed at your home network, which is nice kind of skirt some things and get a lot better security that way. But yeah, that is the reverse proxy networking 103. That's probably gonna be the last networking 10 anything for a little bit, but hopefully some of you found this useful. Good luck to you.